He has spoken. But again, we have free will, so he allows us. God at the center of our spiritual walk. So important. He is everything. We are nothing. And if a little bitty part of you just went, <clears throat> because you heard you were nothing, you still haven't got rid of yourself. You haven't come to the end of yourself yet. And every time you go, I am nothing, and you shut up, you know that you still haven't come to the end of yourself. So that is a good test for knowing when you've come to the end of yourself. <coughs> People who have come to the end of themselves, <coughs> they look in the mirror and go, God is everything, I am nothing. And you, they go, that is the right place. Because it's not that you're useless or weak or have no value as a human being. It means in relation to what God is doing and who God is, you are nothing. He is everything in your life. We chew this down very difficultly. This is not a good message. You need like lots of water because your throat runs dry very quickly. Because we don't want to hear that we're nothing and that we have to come to the end of ourselves and that we have to surrender. These are hard messages for us to chew. And we want to split them out because they taste bad. But unfortunately, this is the only way you get to experience the sweetness of God. God at the center of our leisure time, that basically means we don't participate in activities that would offend God or is against his instruction. So for instance, leisure activity, having a glass of wine with my husband, bad or no? Laura looks confused, Mariki says no, Tate is like no. <laughs> what, bad or no? No. No, it's not bad. Is it against God's instruction to have a glass of wine? No. Okay, another example. <laughs> Vince's words, Buchai with my husband. Bad or no? Bad. Bad, because the Bible speaks against drunkenness. <laughs> we need to discern these things. We need to discern these things. I watch a TV program that has got some supernatural hippie jibby going on, but it's a very good show. Top ratings in America. Bad or no? Bad. Because we will not get into that stuff. God says no. Yeah? You understand? That you must measure up against what the Bible says. <laughs> you're all still smoking from the wine thing. <laughs> Some of you are just here to take it and wow. <laughs> God made the seat. <laughs> Wine, beers, spirits, whatever you want to bless I don't know. Drunk it was just a point. God at the center of our rest time? Now, very serious this. God started convincing me about this in about August last year. And he, made, he kept up at it until I finally got the, <laughs> the message at the end of the year. That we consider the Sabbath to be holy because it is. And therefore, we must look for ways to stay in rest and peace and communion with Him on that day. <coughs> we each must be examples to our families of doing this. If I am seen to be running around town, doing my shopping, uh, meeting up with friends, blah, blah, blah. You know, we just can't wait for 6 o'clock to come on a Saturday. We have to do it before. I'm not a good example of what it means to be in rest and peace and communion with my God on that day. He did not just give that day for us to rest, which we desperately need. He gave it for us to rest in Him, which automatically assumes that He is the focus of your attention that day. Not everything else. Not 
rugby matches and soapies and shopping and meeting as many friends as you possibly can in three hours and okay, all of your examples. I'm encouraging you this year to get this right with immediate effect. <laughs> Sounds like I'm serving you notices on something. Get this right with immediate effect. Because it is the day if you have none other that he handed it to you on a silver platter or even a gold one and said, take this day because I'm giving it to you. And that is the day on which you can make me a priority. Can you not? Can you not? God at the center of our children. You know that I said this with the, the, the topic of children that we had. We don't raise our children, God does. And some of you are going, oh, thank goodness God raised my kids, because I've had it with them. The point is, is when you put God in the center of everything else, you put God in the center of your children's lives, and everything you do with them, if they're too young to do it themselves, emanates from Him. Everything. Teach them now to build God's centered lives. They're never too young. Everything they do, God, it must radiate from God in the center. So, teach them now to watch their language. Teach them now to be respectful to people. Teach them now to obey God's instructions. Because by the time they're as old as we are, it will be habits. And they won't have to try so very, very hard like we're all trying to do. Do them a favor and let God raise them. This is a big one because especially now South Africa is not having a very good time in politics. So I thought I'd put this one in, God in politics. The thing is we all like to beat certain people. I'm too afraid to say names now because tomorrow this video is on YouTube and then there's trouble. But it comes down to this. Yeah, we don't want men in us fall. <laughs> we accept and surrender to the fact that no world leader is in place without God allowing it. The Bible says so. And don't get unnecessarily focused on politics with, and neglecting what God says about the future. Remember, that's where your politics lies, where God says your future lies. I know it's extremely distressing, and I've had a couple of moments myself over the last few months. Things aren't going right, and our government doesn't seem to be doing stuff, and we feel like we're not being led well, and people are fighting, and there's problems with racism, and things seem to be getting out of control. But let us not focus on the human government. Albeit they are there by God's power and grace, it is not the end game for us. We are on our way to a government that is going to be run by a leader far superior to anything the world has ever seen. And so it will be a far superior system. We've got to remember that. God at the center of achievements. Now this is very important, people. We give glory and praise to God in all. I should have bolded that and underlined it and put daisies around it. I don't know. All our achievements. All. The fact that I managed to get this done today with all the obstacles. God. <laughs> the fact that I got distinctions. God. The fact that I have clients and work. God. The fact that I stand up here and can communicate. God. Not me. Not me at all. <laughs> if it was me, it would be a disaster. Therefore, you see it as an offering to Him, we keep nothing for ourselves. Nothing. 
The bit that we want to keep for ourselves that walks around and says, I do good today. That's the haughty side that doesn't acknowledge that God helped you do good. And this is hard because, you know, sometimes we don't feel so good about ourselves and we want to boost our confidence and our self-esteem a little bit and we want to feel good about ourselves. And so it feels nicer when we say, we did it instead of God did it. But again, it's that paradox of if we're not focusing on ourselves, we tend to be far happier in the long run. Because you know what tends to happen when I say God does it. I know that God has the strength to do it. But when I say I'm doing it, I'm always having to go for the next thing that I'm doing better and better and better because my steam is running out. And I've got to keep going. And the pressure is on to have more and more achievements so I can feel better and feel better and feel better about myself and feed the little gremlin inside of me that says, you are not worthy. When you let that all go and you give it all to God as an offering, you don't have to worry about rubbish like that. You don't have to worry about achieving so that your self-confidence is better because you will already be loved and you will know that you are loved by God himself. So you won't need that rubbish in your life. Okay? Understand that because it's a very important point. Um, let me just see something I should see. Yeah. Okay, so God at the center of our struggles, the last one. When He's at the center of our struggles, we know that He's greater than us, that His ways are not our ways, and that He knows the beginning from the end, and that He uses all things for our good. All under the Bible. And lastly, we are happy to let him be in control. Happy, happy, not worried, not I don't trust God to do this. We are happy for him to be in control. Goodness me, it was a relief that I didn't have to worry about whether my funding was going to get approved because I knew it would. I knew he wouldn't fail me because last year he did it. Yo, 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 yo. You've got to really suck it up sometimes to get there. Really suck it up to get there sometimes. So, 2016. I am declaring this the year of living a God centered life. And I am holding you accountable and you will hold each other accountable for this. What do I mean? I am not going to let it go if I see you not living a God-centered life. You are not going to let it go when you see each other not living a God-centered life. You are definitely not going to let it go if you see me not living a God-centered life. I give you permission to question me on what I'm doing. And so you should give permission to each other to question what you are doing. And we will put this video up on the Edad Bachelor YouTube site. And I suggest you watch it with your families and friends and you agree to hold each other accountable to living a God-centered life. So that this year, ladies, we can really progress in our spiritual work. We can see the fruits of our labor in God's strength and feel like we have achieved victory in His name instead of just walking mediocrely in life and getting by. Let us hold each other and ourselves to that. Okay? And so with that in mind, what are some of the topics you would like to discuss 